we asked our players, where would you like to see Company of Heroes 3? And we put on the board two new theatres. We decided on the Mediterranean Theatre because it's what our players asked for. A while back we sent out so many different surveys and I think we got back about 60,000 responses and by far the Mediterranean was the one that the players wanted to see the most. Authenticity and realism is critical for the Company of Heroes franchise and we're not just taking it from ourselves. We're taking our stories, we're taking our concept for our narrative and we're actually working with external ethics consultants. We want to make sure, are we treating this material with all of the respect and all of the care that it deserves? Well, the one thing we wanted to do with Company of Heroes 3 is make sure we build a game for the core first. So our fans that have played our franchise, the ones that are the most passionate are the ones we started with. For existing fans of Company of Heroes, we've definitely focused on the core of what they love, which is flanking, cover, and destruction. On top of that, we're bringing in breaching, which can help get those stuck-in troops out of buildings. This adds to the authenticity and to the real we heard from players that garrisoning was too powerful in many cases. It was just a race to a building near a capture point and you garrison it and you're in there for a while. I think if I had to choose a feature that I'm most excited about, it's the verticality in the gameplay and the fact that our environments are so different. In Italy, which is what we've really been focusing on as of late to make sure that's in a great state to get out to fans, the verticality really changes gameplay. You now have bottlenecks and choke points and gain height advantages, and it really changes the game from anything we've ever done before. And our True Sight feature, which our players love, that's much improved with the verticality in our environment where true sight really shines because getting a tactical advantage by having height is fantastic. Of course, there's counters to that as well. Company of Heroes is an intense RTS experience and it is something that we are loving building, but we also want to make sure that we're providing an experience that new players can get into and really enjoy. This is a strategic turn-based experience that interweaves with single-player RTS missions and skirmishes, and the really fun thing about that is how the gameplay between the two of them can interrelate. And talking about the RTS, we're also working on a new feature called Tactical Pause. This is something that's an optional single-player only feature where players are able to stop everything on the battlefield take a deep breath, think about what their units are doing, give them their actions, and then hit go and see how everything's going to play out on the map. Here we have players queuing up where their uh, infantry are going to go, where their tanks are going to go, uh, call-ins, building bases, um, also uh, actions that the infantry can do, like throwing grenades. So everything you can do uh, in real time, you can do while paused, and then you simply uh, unpause the game again. Naval and sea forces were a big part of this theater. Our Navy is going to be mostly on the campaign map where not only can you bombard cities and enemies from the seas, but the enemy will have U-boats. Uh, they're trying to sink your ships. They're trying to get to your supply lines. And when you go into missions and you go into skirmishes, if you have destroyers nearby, you can actually call in some bombardments in the RTS as well. So full Navy support. We're looking to our players over the next year and a half to help us develop this feature. We're super excited about it. The key on our campaign map is to capture airports so you can have air superiority. I mean, a huge part of the war was supporting your troops on the ground in the air. And so you can do recon, of course, once you have an airport. You can bomb different enemy types. You could even bomb Monte Casino. Uh, just like in real life, which turned out maybe not to be uh, the gr a great move. But those are decisions you're going to make uh, on the battlefield. So it really is taking Arden's Assault and then timesing it by a thousand. Because now we have this full 3D environment. All the things that make a great strategy game are the things that we're adding to the map to make it the best campaign experience ever in Company of Heroes. With our PvP modes, the most important thing is authenticity and adding more depth than ever before. So players who loved our first two games, not only are they going to see features they've loved, but we have new features to make sure that they can play our PvP in Company of Heroes 3 for 10 more years. And even our campaign, you're going to see 10 different kinds of skirmishes. And we hope to bring that to PvP as well. And little things that our players have been asking for, such as key binding, which we've never delivered before, where players can customize their keyboard. Those are some of the features we're bringing to make the PvP experience the best 
best it's ever been. Two of the first factions we can talk about for Company of Heroes 3 are the British forces and are the American forces. And yes, Company of Heroes players have experienced these before. What we're trying to do with Company of Heroes 3 is to grow them and to make the gameplay newer and more interesting. So if you do things that they like, such as not blowing up their towns and not blowing up their airports, they will do things for you and they will go out and they will survey the environment and look for the enemy and report back to you. They can sabotage bridges and do other things like that that they really Really did in the war and the more you work with them the more they're gonna do for you. One of the things we're so excited about with our campaign is how the player is gonna be able to interact with it. It's your actions on the map, it's the tactics you take, it's your decision around what direction you're taking as you're moving through the campaign. It's the combination of all of these actions on the map that are gonna spawn the different narrative beats. We are planning on launching the game uh, in late 2022, but as everyone's gonna notice, we're announcing pretty early. Uh, and the reason we're announcing early is because we want players to get to play the game before launch and give us feedback. We want players to just absolutely dive in and eat up every single bit of gameplay that we're giving to them and then we want to hear back from them about what we think about it. I mean, the new strategic turn-based combat on the campaign map is the new thing. What players are going to be able to see is a portion of the Italian campaign. They're going to be able to play with the American and the British forces. They're going to be able to engage with the Italian partisans. You start in Naples. Um, your first task is to stop the bombing of Naples by um, taking over an airport where the Germans uh, currently own. Uh, once you do that, you spread out across uh, this slice of Italy uh, and try and take back uh, this area. Um, many of the features that will be in the final game are there. The feedback that we're going to get from our pre-alpha preview is invaluable. We take this feedback, we're going to bring it into the studio. So come and join us. It's going to be loads of fun.